Hello world, it's Rational Pi, and we're back with our fourth and final video of the Fibonacci series. Uh, we're looking at our logic right now of what we're about to uh, code. And I'll be honest with you, I was going to live code this one, but based on the trial and error I had to do to make sure I got this right, what I am going to do, I have my laptop right here, it has the code right here, but we're going to go ahead and live type it so I can go through and explain what's happening as best as I can. And if I do not get, oh, drop Pinkie Pie. Uh, if for whatever reason I don't get part of this right, or if you feel like there's more explanation that's needed, please leave a comment uh, or send me a message and I'll be sure to fix that as soon as possible. Um, MATLAB is still something that I'm still getting used to. Uh, it's something I used briefly in my uh, degree for mechanical engineering. And uh, Hopefully you guys are able to pull some information out of this and learn a couple different functions within MATLAB. So let's go ahead and remove Pinkie Pie. She's getting annoying. You can go right there. That's fine. Um, so first and foremost, we need to open MATLAB. Well, this is what you're going to see when you open MATLAB. You got your editor here. You got your uh, your command window down here. And then this is where you're going to do all your coding. The unique thing about MATLAB is that you can do a whole bunch of stuff down here if you want to. You, like you can say a equals three, and then over here you have the variable a which equals to three. So you can actually, you don't have to have a script running for MATLAB. You can actually just code as you need to. So we're gonna go ahead and clear it because I use a in my code. Um, and I have a fully commented piece of code that I have to show at the very end, kind of show uh, the different uh, points, high points of the code that we're using. So, in our logic, let's go back to our Visio file. The first thing we need to do is open our data file, and then we're going to create an array from the data. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and call it file ID, and we're going to use what's called fopen, which opens the file. And we're going to it's data.txt, and it is a integer file and that's what the R is for, it's an unsigned integer. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, staple that by saying format spec is equal to D, which stands for unsigned integer. So we opened our file and now we're going to create our array. So I don't really have any clever names for the array so we're just going to call it A and we're going to specify the size of A is equal to two columns and an infinite number of rows because we don't know initially how many rows are going to be coming into our MATLAB statement because remember in our last uh, piece of code on C++ we actually asked the user how many pieces of or how many digits of the Fibonacci sequence they wished and we're going to base that off of here so we're going to put this infinite here because we don't know initially what we're going to be uh, looking at. And then we're going to have A is going to equal to F, we're going to scan F, F scan F, the file ID, the format, and then the size, excuse me. Okay, and then we're going to close the file for memory's sake. Okay, so we've done the first part of our logic already in just seven lines, technically five, but I had some filler in there. Just for uh, just for convenience sake, just for you. Um, so let's go back to our logic. All right, the next thing we need to do, we need to create a third column for spline data, and then we're going to have this loop function. All right, pretty simple, I think. Here's, but it seems simple. But here's where most of my tinkering around with this came out of, and it still doesn't really work all that well for higher numbers, uh, because once you get to the higher uh, orders, the splines that you create are going to look a little bit more flat, and I'll explain why in just a second. So, whenever we read it, it's going to be, uh, I, I misspoke earlier when I said two columns by infinite rows, it was actually built as two rows with infinite columns. So at first we're going to need to fix that, so we're going to say A is equal to the transpose of A, which is A prime. And then we're going to say that a, and we're going to go ahead and create our middle uh, function, is going to equal to the original uh, lines of a, 
in the first column. It goes rows, columns, and that's why I misspoke earlier, and I apologize for that. And then we're going to create the second row, or the second column, excuse me, and it's going to be a average of the first and second columns. So a first column plus a second column divided by two, and then that's going to be what's going to create the uh, interpolation uh, integer or the uh, decimal number, excuse me. And then the third value is going to be the second column. Okay, so now we have our new array. And then we're going to utilize what's called a sign change. And that's just going to be a, a pointer for our loops that we're going to be using. And that's we're going to go ahead and start it as true. And then our counter is going to be equal to zero. And we're going to start our loop that we mentioned in our logic. So we're going to start at two because we want to keep our first line in our matrix the same. Okay, so from or for x equals two to the size of a, which is a or the size of a one, which basically says from x equals two to the amount of columns that we have, which is the number of pieces of data that we have. So from x equals two to how many columns we have, if sign change, which means if it's true, we're going to have a of the x uh, uh, row in the middle column equal to that same number plus and this is where most of my trial and error came into play and the way I found it was I literally just brute forced a bunch of numbers probably better easy way easier way to do it but it worked just fine for what we we're trying to do and I found it to be 0.25 times 1.5 to the power of x minus 2. I cannot type today. Not doing good. And using this, I was able to get a reasonably good uh, graph made out of it. So now we're going to say the counter is going to be incremented by 1. And then we're going to have if the counter is greater than two because we need to change it every two values and sign change is tr true then we need to make it to where sign change is now false and counter is equal to zero to reset the counter then we're going to end and we're going to end and then we're going to oh excuse me that should be else and then it's going to have the same formula except once we get to here it's going to be minus that constant amount up here 1.5 to the power of x minus 2 well due to it being almost 20 minutes long I don't think you want to sit here for 20 minutes watching me do the Fibonacci sequence spiral I'm going to go ahead and stop it here, and then we're going to go ahead and continue with, with a fifth video uh, next time. And uh, again, likes and subscribes are always appreciated, and I will see you guys next time.